has your percussion writing changed in any way because of the expressiveness and the exploration that has happened yeah. in the concerto? Well, what I did learn was that the that percussionists and the use of percussion has even more expressive possibilities than I had imagined originally. <laughs> Because of the extraordinary players like yourself that are out there today um, with an enormous capacity to create really wonderful sounds mm -hmm. and to bring a new world to the world of the orchestra, for example. My life with percussion has gone back a very long way. And the way I feel now is that I've just begin to, uh, begun to scratch the surface of what's possible. Ooh. This is a very different world with all oh, the yeah. instruments involved and, and yes. lo the logistics of sure. a stage like this. As I see it now, from my point of view, the percussion is, is just as important as the winds, as the strings, and as the brass. Mm -hmm. And you see that by the amount of percussion I use in my music. And if there are enough composers who write important music um, that engage percussion in a major way, then this will happen. It's interesting with the percussion concerto how you know the audience seem to connect very well to the music. Often with the percussion pieces, they can be in the, you know engrossed in the physical aspect, yeah, yeah, the yeah. novelty, right, 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 um, right, side of things. But actually, they, they're extremely moved by the music, and of course this is the percussionist's aim as well. What it? I'm hoping to see in my lifetime is a situation with, if orchestras still exist uh, yes. by the end of my life, uh, that um, the percussion will be of such importance that we might have four, five, six players as a regular uh, uh, contingency of the percussion section because there's enough important literature that will demand that. And that's meant that I've in increased my use of percussion in my orchestral music. So I tried to find instruments that were colorful and sonic and had a lot of uh, ringing qualities to them, like the Pertales, um, that uh, I knew would be successful. <laughs> So as well as the windman version, <laughs> you mentioned <laughs> recently a two piano version, That's Heavens right. Above. Excellent. I mean, this is great news for us. Well, uh, the way that, that came about is um, a young uh, musician in the UK was preparing for a concerto competition, a uh, young percussionist, and one of his musician friends uh, made a transcription of the orchestra for two pianos. And he actually sent it to me. And I believe, evidently, the uh, young percussionist just did win the competition, so it was very helpful. I mean but One of the things that happens in the second movement is um, a rather uh, percussive attack on the vibraphone, which is then uh, sustained by holding the pedal down. And then we just have this beautiful melody that emerges from the Almglocken mm -hmm. or frogmouth cowbells. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this is a beautiful color. It's a wonderful instrument, isn't it? it? it wonderful really instrument. Is. Yeah, uh, I was. I needed. I needed a, 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 a more pitch sounds for this ostinato that's that's played but slightly out of tune and the Amglocken have that it doesn't have the kind of purity of uh, the harmonic spectrum that a vibraphone has or crotales mm -hmm. so the pitches while there may be a g sharp it's it has a lot of inharmonics right. in this in the structure yeah <laughs> 
And so I wanted that, and yet I needed the pitches. So it was a matter of having a, a large congregation of pitched metallophones. Mm -hmm. I've had a good number of performances really all around the world, even yes. in Japan, surprisingly, because really wonderful wind ensembles in Japan. Yes. There has been a wind band version made of the percussion concerto. Right. Right. So now, was this something that you wanted to do? Did you feel it was a good idea? Well, I actually didn't do it. Uh -huh. okay. uh, it was done by a doctoral student when I was teaching at Eastman who did it as a thesis. He was a conducting, he was a composer conducting major. Wow. And uh, a wind conductor. And uh, so that was his doctoral thesis to make a wind version of it's it. A, it's, it sounds quite different than the orchestral version Wonderful. because there's no strings, obviously. And the clarinets have to substitute. Essentially, it's the clarinets and the winds that substitute for the strings. Mm -hmm. uh, the piece uh, in the many performances that I've heard of the wind version is much clearer, actually. And you hear things you don't hear in the orchestral version because the strings have a tendency to mask a lot of the sounds. I, all I would say is they're different. I wouldn't put one over the other. Okay. When you have a major soloist uh, like yourself, that's one issue. But when you find students at conservatories and universities deciding they want to play the piece, mm -hmm. that really feels very good. It may provide an opportunity for, that, for the piece to have a, an extended life. And that's what sure. composers hope for their work, that exactly. the, the music lives on. Yeah.